There was a time when she loved America, especially the heartland town of Muscatine, Iowa. He started farming there in the 1980s. Then came back just as he was about to become president of China. I feel, he says, like I'm coming home. I want to welcome Vice President Xi uh, to the Oval Office. Xi also went to the White House. And in L.A., he took in a Lakers game. Self-confident, gregarious, even westernized in his way. <laughs> America was charmed. Well, it's inappropriate, but I love that man. <laughs> so how did that Xi Jinping, viewed with so much hope, how did he become... This Xi Jinping. How did he become this Xi Jinping? Well, the Tsingtao newspaper once had a story about he and his first wife, the daughter of a Chinese diplomat assigned to London Embassy. Their neighbors used to hear them fighting. Like cats and dogs, the wife is very pro-West, even wants she to leave China and go to London. Any real Chinese experiencing this kind of East-West showdown would quickly know where he stands. Xi Jinping making a veiled threat against the United States. Anyone who tries to bully China, he says, will be banging its head bloody against a great wall of steel. This indelible phrase that struck people around the world. Many China scholars do not recognize the Xi Jinping they see now. I didn't see, I don't think any of us saw, the kind of dictatorial, sycophantic, control freak that he has become. China is much more of a dictatorship today because of Xi Jinping. That's a recipe for serious danger. Xi Jinping is the most repressive leader China has seen since Chairman Mao. In just the last few months, he has handed down dozens of new orders. They see greater state control over everything from education to technology to entertainment. Good leaders are hard to come by these days. This is how a feudal emperor protects the people and rules the land. Things as simple as who you can admire in the movies, every piece of entertainment culture. No more effeminate men on television. China calls them sissy men. Which rock stars you want to support and how much you want to idolize them. Also forbidden, karaoke songs that endanger national unity. Many video games no longer allowed. The Chinese public begins to say, well, hold on. You want control of what's in my heart and what's in my mind. What's left for me? And that's a very dangerous thing, actually, a very risky thing for the government to do. China has always censored the internet, but now it's scrubbing its own homemade entertainment. <laughs> Popular television shows and movies have disappeared. And of course, there is no Google, no Facebook, no Snapchat, no Instagram. Some of that predated Xi, but he has doubled down on a separate Chinese technosphere. The Chinese government said, we're actually going to separate. We don't want a World Wide Web. They have, you know, tens of millions of monitors of social media 24-7, watching and you know, taking down postings like whack-a-mole. What a thorough and clean job. America should seriously consider outsourcing its governance to China. Step by step, over the course of the years that Xi Jinping has been in power, he has been eating away at the domains of autonomy in Chinese life and consolidating him into the hands of the party. In fact, the scholar Elizabeth Economy describes Xi Jinping as embodying the country's third revolution. First came Mao, the founder, then Deng Xiaoping, the reformer, and now Xi Jinping, bringing the Communist Party back into dominance everywhere. The Chinese government really now
controls you know, the physical environment of the Chinese people through hundreds of millions of surveillance cameras and drones that can identify a Chinese person you know, through facial recognition or even by how a Chinese person walks. All of this information is transmitted back to China's public security bureaus instantaneously. What they've instituted under Xi Jinping is a kind of artificial intelligence and surveillance system that is unprecedented. This is Orwell on steroids. One way to get ready for the Trump COVID. Unlike Trump, one COVID casualty in China is too many. That includes watching Xi Jinping app on your cell phone. The Xi app is on many Chinese phones. Its purpose, to help people study Xi Jinping talk. That's right. Study what he thinks about everything. Xi Jinping's sayings, his speeches, his activities, and party dogma, and then take quizzes. And they have to report those quizzes uh, to the local uh, party head of their work unit. There's even a game show. How much do you know about Xi Jinping talk? Much of Xi Jinping talk is communist ideology and the central role he believes it should play in China. In a feudal system, an emperor must make himself a role model for the people. In his life. But there lies a central conflict. He is preaching strict adherence to socialism in a country where capitalism has been exploding for decades. A socialist economy that was also one of the most ravenous consumers of luxury goods, things like Lamborghinis and Ferraris and Rolexes and Louis Vuitton. The rich have been getting richer, and in some cases, more decadent. There's a school for butlers, and a finishing school for children of the rich. Ferragamo. Young Chinese billionaires often behave as badly as their counterparts around the world. It's like raising a child. I have deep affection for my dog. This young man started a Chinese version of Pets.com, then used his money to build a mansion for his dog. She is now cracking down on all kinds of private enterprise. He doesn't have a problem with them getting rich, but he wants them to get rich in a patriotic way. At the point at which it began to feel as if it was brushing up against the outer edges of his power and authority, that's the point at which it became intolerable. Well, China used to be much richer. But all rich people must only do their dirty jobs. In the gutters where the light don't shine.